right now on VFN TV. We are talking about stress. We talked about a previous program, but we're going to go deeper in it. How does stress affect your body and how to resolve it? This is so important. If you want to enjoy life, deal properly with stress right now on VFN TV. Be sure to subscribe and press alert to get new notifications of new success secrets made available on VFN TV. Did you know that 50% of Americans are experiencing, they say, moderate stress? I think 43% are right around there is going to the doctor for some sort of sickness, but the root of that sickness is actually caused from stress. Stress, stress, stress. stress. We'll be talking about that and how it affects the body and some remedies. I'm Greg Lancaster. Joining me is John Ramos. Hello. Stress. Stress, man. It's a real thing, isn't it? Yes. We were just talking about the the, uh, 21 Pilots, their song called Stressed Out during the break right there. It's pretty interesting. But the song was basically talking about the demands of life. Yeah. That, that you realize that they require things from you and you can get stressed out about Life it. is demanding. You know, right. this is part two of a series that we've been just working on and sharing with you. If you missed part one, you got to watch yes. it because we're building upon this thing. But one of the things we were talking about is that causes stress is unresolved issues. Yeah, unresolved issues with yourself, unresolved issues with God. I mean, think about David when David had sinned against God and did these different things and he said, you know, I feel like my bones are being crushed. I feel like difficult things are happening. <laughs> we bit and, stressful. <laughs> yeah, and so what he was saying was, God, you're my sin because I'm not dealing with the sin. I'm not coming to you and acknowledging it and saying, forgive me. And you know, but God forgives us if we just acknowledge it, and then it's off our body. See, he was being crushed by it. But he said when he actually repented, all of a sudden the stress left his body. Sometimes we can be under stress because of unresolved issues between us and God. We have sin in our life we didn't deal with. We haven't confessed it. We just stay in it. And it's because it deteriorated our body. Jesus dealt with the sin issue on the cross. And so we have to be able to carry that to God and say, God, forgive me. Uh, 1 John 1, 9 says, if we sin, you know, that that God will forgive us. If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from the stress Mm. and all the things that's caused stress from all unrighteousness, you know, and bring us back to that right state. Yeah. Thank God for forgiveness. Yeah. And forgiveness sometimes is all you really need. Second thing is to, for, you know, forgive yourself. You know, that if you're holding on forgiveness towards yourself, something that happened, you need to carry that to God and forgive yourself. And finally, we'll talk about other people, you know, relationships, unresolved issues between you and someone else. If you live long enough, you have unresolved issues with no folks or, or issues that come up. And if you're not a person that, that likes to resolve issues, you're just stacking up issues, and eventually that turns in on you and begins to deteriorate you. And the reality is, is that the way God forgives us, he says, if you don't forgive them, I won't forgive you. So you have to begin to talk about things and forgive people for what they do. One way to have a good relationship with somebody, have the ability to forgive them and to be able to move on and, and to restore if the relationship is actually workable. So unresolved issues, and uh, you think like, oh, if I talk about it, it's going to be stressful. Yeah. Well, look what it's doing to your marriage now. Exactly. Look what it's doing to your, your family now. Look what it's doing to your workplace now. Isn't it better to resolve it? Even if you ha- lose half of your workforce, think about this. You resolve that, and the half you lose may be the very p- part, people that decided they didn't, they, they were keeping that faction going in your company, or that faction going into your family, that faction going into your church. And when you deal with that, I'm telling you, over and over, I've seen this, when you deal with it, and it's, it is difficult, but it's not as stressful as living with it. Mm-hmm. And, and when you deal with it, even though it might be rough, and people who refuse to get right, you know, in your company, in your church, wherever it is, that they, they may go their own way, but everybody else that's left is left with peace. And that's so important. We talk about, I talk about it in my book, I Will Fight, 10 Strategies for Success, you know, where um, the book Integrity, it was written by Dr. Henry, Henry Cloud. Cloud, and he talks about, you know, that the whole office was stressed out in some of his studies, and the people were watching the numbers that are watching the people, and the people were basically said, if you don't deal with this person causing the stress, then we're leaving. You don't even have mm-hmm. a company. Mm-hmm. And the whole book is about we've got to begin to confront those things. And so so, so unresolved issues, and, and one of the best forms of groups, we talk about this in the VFNKB community, you got to join that, vfnkbcommunity.com, but well, what is the perfect kind of group? One is that you can literally work, every one of you can resolve issues, you feel comfortable enough to bring things up, you, you create an environment that people are okay talking about their weaknesses or their failures, and then people don't see a way to pounce on them, but a way to help them resolve that issue. That's a perfect kind of team. And so developing a workplace, a ministry, a church where your leaders can, 
can openly talk about things and openly say, this is going on, can we resolve this? And that's a per the perfect kind of team Absolutely. to talk about, you know, versus, and, go ahead. Yeah, as opposed to a closed group, because all, all that does is produce more stress, yeah. more animosity, more issues. And really, someone has to take the lead in yeah. there and say, you know what, let, let's, oh, let's give this opportunity to breathe. It may come out ugly, but at the end, you'll have some relief, you know? And, and you can't resolve it by just everybody going to one person. you got to help people go to each other because they don't feel safe. And there's not, there's not a community there. That faction's still there. So you got to work with folks that they'll be openly talking about things. And it'll change your whole workplace, and you will actually enjoy going to your company again. Yeah, that's Pretty strong. Pretty amazing thing. That's so, strong. John, talk about this, so, how it affects the body. Yes, stress affects the body. We, we, we found out previously is that so many people are experiencing ailments to things in their muscles and in their, their bodies. Their and their heart, their heart, lungs, everywhere. their blood. But yet they didn't know that it, this could be all caused by stress. And so we're going to be sharing some parts of, of some wisdom regarding how this stress affects your body. The first thing is your heart. When you're under stress, your heart begins to start pumping. In fact, take a look. Welcome to your tour of your body on stress. When you're stressed, your body reacts instantly. Here are 12 of the most significant changes that happen in your body. Your heart. Each time you experience stress, your heart beats faster and you put excess strain on it. It's interesting that you know, the Word of God says the issues of life flow from the heart mm. and that your heart will reflect that stress, you know, yeah. that, you know, it's, think about it. If your heart stops, we define that as death. Well, right? the last days, men's hearts will fail them. Because you know? of fear, which means stress and anxiety. And so in the midst of all this chaos in the world, you're called to have, have peace as a believer, as a mm. follower of Christ, and hang around people that are people of peace or be a person that brings peace to a situation. But your heart will begin to just fall apart. You know, have, you know, blockage, and, and, and you'll respond to food differently, and your body begins to go through these stressors, and it starts gathering things instead of losing things, and to gather things in your veins called blockage, and it's yeah. called, you know, clogging, and, you know, that you can end up with, literally, what they call a heart attack with one of your veins closing yeah. off, and it, it seems like a small vein, but it will make a big boast Ooh. when it goes, and it feels like an elephant sitting on your chest. Wow. Yeah. Well, we talked about stress before, that there's good stress and bad stress, right? Good stress is you need your heart pumping, you need that energy, you need that blood flowing to take action, to, to do the work that you do, to maybe even escape trouble or, you know, catastrophe. Right. But the problem comes in is when you're living under a chronic state of stress where your heart is pumping nonstop and you have all these other symptoms. We, and you, you know that by you're always trying to flight. You're always trying yeah. to get away from a situation. Yeah. You're that running. You feel that like, oh, yeah. get, away, body, get away, get away, get away, get away. Your telling on you. Yeah, right, yeah. yeah. Your body's telling you. Here's, here's number two. Your blood pressure. Well, how, how your blood it? pressure. Yeah. Watch how stress affects your, your blood pressure. Take a look. Your blood pressure. Your blood pressure increases because it's pumping extra blood, oxygen, and sugars to your muscles to supply more energy. Remember, under stress, you trigger your fight or flight response, and your body responds as though you're under attack. Whether it's real, just a perceived threat, or you're just feeling the pressure and tension from your modern day hectic life. Your blood pressure further rises because your body also narrows and constricts your blood vessels to prevent you from bleeding to death from injury. Wow. So you're looking at you know, whether it's perceived or it's a real stressful thing, your body's still reacting to <laughs> That's it. That's right. That's so important to understand. So if somebody's perceiving it, if they feel like they're being treated unjustly by you as their employer or something, you need to talk about it and help them see if you're not, if it's just a perception, help them see where they're not because they're experiencing that kind of stress no going on in their body. And, and pressure, I think, always think about, you know, how cars work. You know, when you have, you know, the oil surging through the motor and all of a sudden, or the water going through the, the coolant, when it blows out that pipe, it just mm. starts spraying everywhere. And it's like, it can't handle that kind of pressure. You know, the motors get very hot, but the body, you know, if you can't handle that pressure, they call it aneurysm. All of a sudden you have a blowout out of a vein. That's when you, you know, go for a stroke or you have, I mean, your body, well, tells on you when you're under stress. You know, you're meant. You're not meant to fall apart like that. But you got to deal with that. That those stressors. We're fixing to go to a break, but understand this: that Jesus said, "In this life, you're going to have stress. You're going to have troubles." He said, "But cheer up." So, how can we have joy in the midst of the storm? How can we be focused on Jesus when everybody else is sinking? Like Peter, when he looked at the storm, he started sinking. 
It's having our eyes on Jesus. I'm not talking about this religious stuff. I'm talking about the creator of the universe who loves you, who cares about you, who gave you the gift that you're using, who will help you through everything. And his name is Jesus. And he says, apart from abiding and hanging out with him, spending time with him, hearing what he has to say, hiding his word in your heart, talking to him, listening to him, and doing, doing what he says to do, then you're going to have this, you're not going to handle this, this pressure and these storms right. And a lot of people want to do that. They hear about it. It's like, I'm trying to read, you know, this many scriptures a day and whatever. Listen, that's not a relationship. I mean, you imagine sitting down with uh, your family. Say, okay, I got three minutes. I'm going to spend some time with you, family. Okay, I'm done. That's what people do in their Bible reading plans. They go, okay, I'm going to pray for a minute. I'm going to read three scriptures. God bless you, God. Right? Yeah. That kind of stuff, right? <laughs> that's not just hanging out with him, you know. And we have a simple plan for you how to moderate your body and your physical being in a spiritual way with, through abiding with Jesus Christ. It's at iabide.org. A lot of people want to do it. They just don't have a plan. They need a plan. We developed a simple plan for you at iabide.org. I will walk you step by step. Very simple. Empowering. And you'll find out this life is good. God's got good plans in store for me. Plans to bless me and prosper me. He's taking care of this life. I just need to trust in him. Go to iabide.org and request your simple plan today. John, what's next after the When we break? get back from this break, we're going to be talking about and showing you more parts of the body and how your body responds to the stress. We're also going to give you some, some hacks to relieve this stress. Stress hacks. Oh my Hashtag goodness, it's going to be hacks. so good because you're going to find some relief. Join us we get right back from this break. We'll be right back. Don't miss your chance to get this free book, I Will Fight 10 Strategies for Your Success, where I share a prophetic encounter God gave me about a coming wealth transfer. And this whole genesis of this book and these strategies is to position you for a coming wealth transfer. It's 10 strategies for success, dealing with your belief, your actions, commitments, giving you plans, giving you strategies. I mean, so many things I can't even talk about. But it's yours for free. Go to vfnkb.com and get your free copy now. Did you know that Jesus himself said, apart from abiding in him, that we can accomplish nothing? So many people want to be able to do that, but you know what? They don't have a plan to do it. We put together a simple plan for you, and it's at iabide.org. It's iabide.org. Go there and request your plan today. It is amazing how your life will change when you begin to spend time with him who created the universe. He's been desiring that you would do that. It's at iabide.org. Request your simple plan today. Welcome back to VFN TV with your host, Greg Lancaster. Did you know there's life in the blood? It's so important. As a matter of fact, when you think about the very first person murdered on the face of the earth was Abel, and his blood cries out today. So how we manage our blood mm. is so important, and what you're putting into it, what you're taking out of it. Did you know that stress affects your blood? It can stress affect the, how your blood functions and flows and oxygenates probably all those different areas. Yes. As a matter of fact, let's go there now and take a look. Your blood. Your blood starts clotting, which creates blockages in your circulatory system, preventing the free flow of blood through your body. This is another way your body protects you. So if you're injured, you won't bleed to death. Here's the challenge. Your blood will clot regardless of whether or not you really are injured. Life is in your blood. So how your blood works, for example, the, the, if you start get cut, how does our body just automatically not bleed out? You just opened up a container. You should yeah. bleed out, right? Right. But it, it begins to clot, and it, the blood will work for you. And people say, does God still heal? If you watch rapidly the process of healing in your body when you get a cut, it literally is like a supernatural healing because it is supernatural. How God's designed the Absolutely. body to heal itself. And, but if you're not healing right, if your blood's not working right, then you don't, you become a free bleeder, right? Mm. You just bleed out. And so part of that too is just thinking about, you know, how you, you breathe air in your lungs, but that air has to go through a process of going into your blood somehow and your lungs literally, we'll talk about it probably in the future mm -hmm. part of the program, but the, the aspect of it is that it's not what's coming in your mouth that jumps into your veins, it's a process through your pulmonary system that actually injects you know, oxygen into your blood. So your blood needs to carry life. It carries oxygen to your brain, oxygen to your, you know, your, your body, every yeah. part of your body. That's how you stay, stay alive. Absolutely. You know, if, it, if you get gangrene in the limb, if you don't get uh, Our flow. bodies, listen, 
I think David had it right. He said, I was fearfully and wonderfully, wonderfully made. made yeah. Marvelous are his works, right? Yeah. God knew what he was doing. He created the human body. He said, you're amazing. So there should be no self-hatred or self-condemnation. Let me tell you, for that alone, because you are a masterpiece for what the Lord has done. You know, this next one. So, so you're also saying then that so stress can make you toxic. Oh, Your blood can be toxic. Doubt. Without a doubt. Stress. So literally, to deal with stress is to just purify your blood, really, yeah, what you think absolutely. about it, right? absolutely. Wow, okay. Uh, you know, it's important. We said this in our previous program. We are not medical doctors. So no, we're not. <laughs> we're just sharing with you some wisdom no. that we've learned. Some of the sources here is w, uh, uh, WebMD. WebMD. And, uh, and some personal pain. That's right. <laughs> right. <laughs> wisdom, right? Experience. Yeah. You know, your digestive system is so important. So it helps to break down the food. You're extracting, you know, waste for the, for the actual nutrients. Your body needs this fuel to function. Right. Well, under stress, it's amazing what happens. Your whole digestive system essentially is under attack. In fact, take a look. Your digestion. Stress severely affects your digestion. Under stress, your body shuts or slows down any systems that aren't absolutely necessary to deal with the immediate threat. At those times, your body does not care about digesting food it only cares about staying alive. So the blood supply to your digestive organs is slowed. This can lead to weight gain, which many of us are trying to prevent through good nutrition and exercise. So even if you're eating healthy foods, your body won't be able to properly digest that food and extract the nourishment it needs because that system has slowed down. This can also lead to increased stomach acidity. It's no wonder that you turn on the television and hear countless ads for medication that help with acid reflux and stomach acidity problems. That's why it's essential to manage your stress so your digestion can be strong and process your nutrition properly each day. Otherwise, the food will just sit there and slowly make its way out while you continue to add more food overloading your already slow digestive system. This is so important. You're fearfully and wonderfully made by God. You're creating the image and the likeness of God. And the, our adversary knows that. And he knows to be able to create tension and stress and fear and anxiety mm -hmm. causes the, your creation, your, your body, to begin to just you know, shut down and not operate correctly. So what happens? Everybody who's willing to be a puppet to the, to the darkness, you know, to be able to to buy into fear and anxiety, then uh, you look at your local news, you look at people that are pushing narratives across your community, across your state, across your country, and they're creating tension, they're creating fear, they're creating anxiety. What are they doing? Right in the middle of reporting all that on the news, they switch to a commercial and said, and if you're suffering from high blood pressure and <laughs> digestive problems, so they literally create the pain in your body, and then they make money off saying they're gonna fix the pain, when the reality is the best way to fix the pain that they're causing is to quit watching them, quit listening to them, and quit believing them. It just changes your life. It's amazing. If a tree falls in the woods, does it make noise? Well, they don't know that because they're not there. Well, if there's things going on and you don't know anything about it, it's not going to affect your body. You're not called to know everything. You're called to know God who knows everything and trust Him. I mean, you need knowledge, but you don't need to overload your body. Right. And if there's what, well, How you can find out who they are, find out what they're selling in their commercials. Hmm. You know, and it's heart failure, anxiety. Are you afraid? Do you feel like everybody's against you? Are you scared to go out of your house? Is your blood pressure high? I mean, you can list these things all oh, day yeah. long, the things that they have, oh, yeah. you know. And skin situations, they talk oh, about yeah. skin and uh, just everything. It's like, well, you're causing that by the anxiety and the stress and your digestive system can change. When you quit listening to all that junk that's meant to stir you up, right? On the flip side, too, yeah. you may be wondering, you know, why am I gaining all this weight? I'm not eating yeah. as much. Well, who knew that stress could, could help you to pack on the weight because you're not properly Well, how many people, John, all the food? Who, who they're eating a salad. Yeah. They're eating less food than Absolutely. other folks. Let's and just say they are. <laughs> and they, then, then they, but they're gaining weight. They need to look, probably look at the stresses in your life and, and, you know, begin to abide like we talked about. Begin to hang around. Check your environment out. Talk about Find a out weight, you, weight loss program. Unresolved <laughs> issues in your life, unresolved between you and God, unresolved between others. Find out what you're feeding yourself. Maybe you're in a toxic relationship that's constantly causing you just great stress, and they refuse to resolve anything. It leaves you and your family and your work. and con Maybe you need to switch jobs. You know, Maybe they're just not. It's, you might be making good money there, but you're not going to live long to spend it. 
And so to begin to think about how you know you can manage that instead of just saying, I need to get on another diet, maybe I need to actually change other things in my life. Of course, we're not a doctor. Check with your doctor to be able to find that out. John, what, what are going to happen after this break here? Listen, when we get back from this break, we're going to talk about more of of what your body is being attacked with when they're under stress, and particularly the immune system. So many people are getting sick, and they don't know why. Could it be the stress? Join us when we get right back from this break. We'll be right back. Are we ignoring the most common threat to family life? Dr. James Dobson for Family Talk. We can talk about alcoholism or drug abuse and infidelity, but for many families, the most dangerous threat to marriage is the simple matter of overcommitment. I'm talking about the husband and wife who are too exhausted to take walks together, to understand one another, to meet each other's needs. So often these days, the husband moonlights, the wife works and tries to oversee the home, and everyone is on the brink of exhaustion. Their children get shortchanged, and life goes speeding by in a deadly routine. I see this kind of overcommitment as the quickest route to the destruction of the family, and there simply must be a better way. Some friends of mine recently sold their house and moved into a smaller and less expensive place, just so they could lower their payments and reduce the hours required in the workplace. That kind of downward mobility is unheard of today. It's almost un-American. But when we reach the end of our lives and we look back on the things that mattered most, those precious relationships with people we love will rank at the top of the list. If friends and family will be a treasure then, why not live like it today? The difference between God as a concept and God as a living reality is that a concept is something you believe in. You certainly believe in it, but it's like an accessory. It's like a credit card. It's a gym membership. Um, I control it, and I shape it to meet my life and my needs, right? So I'm still in control. But God as a living reality is an objective truth to which you mold your life to. Right. And that was a big difference. And that set a lot of things in motion, especially understanding a new understanding of the Ten Commandments. Welcome back to VFN TV with your host, Greg Lancaster. This is such an important program. I mean, there's so many good ideas and wisdom and understand how stress is imp impacting us. Listen, if you want to get our podcast, it's all around the world. Wherever mm. you get your podcasts from, yes. we're available at VFN KB's VFN TV podcast. Things like this to encourage you, to empower you. And don't forget to go to vfnkbcommunity.com and join the community where we can talk directly so many ways to be able to help and empower you. God's called you to be successful, but he's called us to work together for that success. Your success is our success. Our success is your success. And our success together is kingdom success. John, Man, that sounds good. Isn't that? <laughs> it's good, isn't it? That's it's right. Good. It's right. We have one, one more thing we'll be able to cover yes. here. Listen, 75% to 90% of all doctor's visits, according to WebMD, are stress-related and ailments uh, and complaints. 75%. 70 to 90%. Listen, this is how stress affects your immune system, your ability to actually be healthy. Take a look. Your immune system. Like your digestive system, your body will suppress your immune system. Under stress, your body is less concerned with fighting disease. Its main focus is fighting off or fleeing from a perceived threat. So this means you're much more susceptible to getting sick and having less physical resources to fight that sickness. When people are upset and stressed about something, have you ever heard the phrase, that makes me sick? Well, yes, those situations can make you sick. Listen, I worked in law enforcement. In law enforcement, we had these rotating shifts. You went from working days to working midnights to working evenings. You go into court when you should be sleeping. And we had colds, we catch a cold, and it would last for a month mm. because we were under such stress and our immune system couldn't fight that cold off because you need rest. Wow. And one of the ways I found out that you can really impact your body for help and handle stress is be able to focus on getting good sleep, good rest. Mm. You know, it needs to be incorporated in your life. It needs to be part of your business model for your business, for your ministry, helping people. How are you doing with your sleeping? Are you getting rest? And rest is rest. Rest is not a different form of work and, and activity. But your immune system, you can get a cold that can't go away. You can get just uh, allergies. You know, I remember when Pat Hamilton, who works with us here, that he uh, would 
we have this stressful moment, we have these huge things that we do, and every single year at this certain time, there was a lot of stress on his body, the environment was happening, and he couldn't even breathe during those times, and he, it doesn't happen anymore. Allergies? But it's not like, I was kind of allergies, but stress, I mean, he was, we were doing some big, you know, citywide events, and it was, we were carrying a lot of pressure on us, so you add all that up, and you maybe could handle it in a normal situation, but now if you have stress, then you can't fight those things yeah. off. But there's a lot of things, skin, uh, uh, breathing issues, you gotta pay attention when you're starting to get something, and if it doesn't shake off at a normal time, you pay close attention to it. And you know, immune deficiencies, another name for that, not this specific thing we're talking about, we're not a doctor, but you know, AIDS is actually an immune deficiency yeah. thing that keeps you, you don't die from AIDS, you die from something you catch. Yeah. And you can't Crohn's shake it off. Crohn's disease as well, too, I believe. What's that? Crohn's disease as oh, well, Oh, yeah, too. the digestive, yeah. the Crohn's. And it's a big deal. It's it, a, it really is a big deal. And this is what we're discovering. We're helping you to discover is that people who are sick mm -hmm. is actually a result could be a lot of times because of the stress in their life. So take a look. That's so important. So understand this. We're gonna, I want to pray with you right now. This is, we're talking about this because we want to encourage you. One of your things that you're going to need to succeed is to be able to manage stress, deal with this life. You will have storms, you'll have trouble, you'll have stress, but God didn't call you to live in that. He called you to live peacefully in the midst of a storm. Go to iabide.org and request your simple plan today. I want to be able to bless you right now and pray for you. Father God, I pray a blessing over each and every one. God, I pray for stress to go, wisdom to come. I speak health to their blood, to their heart, to their body, to their mind, to their immune system. Lord, they're breathing, every, every aspect of their life, their sleep, Father God, their relationships, Father God, I pray a blessing over them in Jesus' name. And Lord, we ask you, dear God, end abortions, send revival, send a third grade awakening, we pray in Jesus' name. And don't forget how easy it is. Love God, love others, and lead others to the same. And don't forget to go to the VFNKB community. Wait, 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 don't go anywhere. Subscribe. Listen, together we can touch the world. That's right. Subscribe below, right? Wait, 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 wait. Don't go away. Subscribe. We're going to touch the world. You know, a lot of people want to abide with the Lord, but they just don't have a plan to do it. You can request that plan today at iabide.org. Hey, be sure to check us out at vfnkb.com and also join the VFNKB community at vfnkbcommunity.com. Listen, your success is our success. Our success is your success. And our success together is kingdom success.